Hello and welcome to Teaching Bio. Today we're going to look at the fourth required practical for AQA A-level biology, and that is the effect of a variable on the cell membrane. So different variables will affect the permeability of the cell membrane and therefore influencing the rate of movement of ions and molecules in or out of the membrane. So here are some variables that they could give you in the exam, okay? And the most obvious one is temperature. So this is a nice, easy um, answer, and it's just that if the temperature increases, it means that proteins, okay, carrier proteins, channel proteins, glycoproteins, um, and receptors in the membrane will denature, okay, due to hydrogen bonds in the tertiary structure breaking, okay, therefore the membrane is more permeable, okay. Um, these are not enzymes, so the active site isn't denatured, but just the tertiary structure, the binding site denatures. Furthermore, high temperatures will increase the fluidity of the membrane, okay, because inside the membrane there is cholesterol, so the fluidity of the membrane will increase, so the membrane is more permeable to the release of substances in the cytoplasm, such as pigment. Um, lower temperature, on the other hand, means that there's less kinetic energy, so there's a slower rate of movement of ions, okay? So if a question asks you to explain what the effect at higher temperatures is, the answer you need to give is the denaturing answer, However, if it's about lower temperatures, it's the answer based around the idea of energy, okay, and there being less kinetic energy. While, yes, there is more kinetic energy here, and therefore you would think there's a faster movement, because proteins make up the fluid mosaic model of the membrane, um, the rate will not necessarily increase, it will decrease, it'll increase to a point, but then after that, when it's too high, it'll start to decrease, similar to enzymes. Okay, and then another factor that they could ask, um, speaking of enzymes, is pH. So low pH means that there's more protons, more H plus ions, and that distorts ionic interactions in the tertiary structure. Therefore, that affects the carrier protein and inhibits the transport of ions either in or out of the um, cytoplasm of the cell. Um, surface area is another practice, is another sort of variable. The larger the surface area, the faster the rate of and diffusion of molecules um, or osmosis and so on forth, smaller surface area, slower rate of movement. Um, they could also ask lipid soluble solvents such as um, ethanol and these damage the cell membrane and make them more permeable, okay? Damage them and make them more permeable. They might ask you to suggest how, um, how ethanol does this um, to and you know to apply your knowledge of hydrogen bonding. If they say that ethanol can hydrogen bond, then you can suggest that ethanol might hydrogen bond with the um, fluid that surrounds the, um, the 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 cell, the tissue fluid, and therefore that could bring water molecules closer together, and that could damage it by causing more water to move into the cell membrane. Alternatively, you could say that ethanols contain uh, protons, which could, you know, just again, just a suggestion here, that could damage the membrane or the ethanol could bind, um, it could lower the pH, it could do lots of different things. Um, now, turning more into the application territory, they could ask uh, variables such as um, antibodies or proteins or hormones or neurotransmitters um, and look at investigations involving that. So obviously antibodies bind and proteins so on bind to the receptors on the membrane and cause disruption. For example, antiphospholipid antibodies. So these antiphospholipid antibodies bind to the receptors on the membrane and they disrupt the cell. They break down the phospholipid bilayer. Okay, so they could perhaps sort of use that sort of context to show um, how the cell membrane, the permeability of the membrane changes, in which case this would become more permeable because it's been disrupted therefore it is more likely to be destroyed by the movement of water into the cell membrane okay um also herbicides okay 2,4-D this is one that has been asked in the exam before and these distort the membrane okay again the damage meaning that ions can move out and water can move in so the same idea as before it means that the membrane is freely permeable, okay, meaning that it's more susceptible to damage via the movement of water in, causing osmotic lysis or just the loss of ions. So here are some common questions that um, come up with this topic. So the first question is, why do we wash the beetroot? So this is using the context of a beetroot being placed in water to see the release of pigment. So why must the beetroot be washed before it is placed in the water? And that is to wash off any pigment on the surface, okay? Um, however, you've got to be very specific. So why do we need to wash off that? So that we can show that the release is only due to the variable that we are changing. 
why are tubes containing leaf discs um, spelled incorrectly? Why is tubes containing leaf discs of beetroot shaken? Okay, so when you put the leaf disc um, into sort of the test tube, and that's to ensure that all tubes remain in contact with the liquid, okay? So it's all that they remain in contact with whatever variable you're assessing, and then that ensures a constant diffusion gradient, okay? How can the release of pigment from cells be measured? Um, this is simply just using colorimetry, so measuring the percentage of absorbance using colorimetry, and then a calibration curve can be drawn, and that can be compared with known values to check for comparisons with others. Why does the volume of water need to be controlled in that experiment looking at pigment release? Um, this is just simply that if there's too much water, that would dilute the pigment, okay? So the test tube would appear lighter than it should and will not produce an accurate reading for the percentage absorbance. Therefore, the water volume must be controlled. Okay, it's important to keep this as a control variable to ensure that you can make accurate comparisons, therefore showing that the effect is only due to the variable that you are changing. Okay, so um, suggest a control experiment for each of the following variables, um, which sort of measure changing memory permeability. Okay, there's a common trend with all these answers, and it's simply just that you need to add water. Okay, you add water and compare alcohol, add water and compare pH is water as it is neutral and compare. Okay, and then for temperature, it will be to simply do it at standard room temperature and compare. So an application question they could ask is leaf disc can be placed in water solution as a, mem as a measure of membrane permeability suggest and explain how. So this question relies on the idea of buoyancy, okay? So you can check the buoyancy, okay, of leaf discs, and they would rise um, if they take in less water by osmosis because their mass would be less, so they would be less dense, so they will rise. However, they will fall if they are more dense because water will move in by osmosis. And then we could compare the different depths of leaf discs in the solution of water. So if we have a look here, um, so, for example, this is the first sort of beaker, and this is the second sort of beaker here, okay? And these are in a solution of water, and how could we measure um, changes to the membrane, okay? Um, some of the leaf discs will accumulate here at the bottom, and then some will accumulate at the top, okay? And the ones that accumulate at the top, okay, shown here, these ones that accumulate at the top, they have they have risen because they have less mass, okay? Which implies that their membrane has disrupted, okay? So the only reason why the membrane has disrupted is because they have lost mass. Sorry, let me a loss in mass, okay? And this loss is probably due to a loss of volume of water. So because they have lost a certain volume of water, they are less dense, so they rise. And the reason why this has happened is because the membrane must be disrupted, whereas these ones at the bottom have more mass, meaning that they're retaining the water in the cytoplasm of the cells. Therefore, the membrane is not disrupted.